we pulled it that way. <laughs> Good day, and thanks for watching HCAM. Tom Nappy here. Coming up next, we take you to Lights Up, the Hopkinton Center for the Arts opening night. Jim Cousins was on the scene and talked to a number of guests in attendance at the Center for the Arts opening night. Obviously, this is a very big moment and a very big night in the life of the HCA. Did you think you was ever going to get here? Yes, I did. And I have to say, because there were just so many people that believed in this. And, you know, when you kept, I kept hearing it over and over again, and Chris Waldman and I kept hearing from other people that this was a good idea. So we said, you know, one day we'll get there. <laughs> I didn't know when that day would be, but. Um, it's here today and it's been uh, a, a culmination of a dream of a lot of people. We're really happy. Can you tell me about when this vision started to actually take place and form? Yeah, uh, well I'll tell you that, you know, certainly 20, 25 years ago with Dora Gab Garabedian, she really was the first person to have the vision for an art center in Hopkinton and got this started and then there were so many people that came after her at the CAA and then um, Myself and, and many other people with Enter Stage Left Theater started about 30 years ago in high school and saying we want a place to be able to call it ours and our theater and our home. And so really those two simultaneous visions came together four years ago and it really was with the boost of the Hopkins Community Endowment that really gave us the energy and the momentum to uh, bring on the fundraising piece to make this creative dream come true. And then really honestly, in those four years, um, it was just the last year and a half, I think, has just totally taken off. And, you know, the more the dream and the idea spread, it took off, and here we are. All right. During the planning and the construction, is there any moment where you were, like, really overwhelmed or really surprised by an aspect or a turn that it was taking? Yes, almost every day. <laughs> was, that was the thing is, as because, because this was very much, um, you know, a, a collaborative effort and a grassroots effort, and there were so many people, um, honestly, the vision started um, much smaller, to be honest, than it is now. You know, we, we were thinking of one building, and then it went to a second, and then it went to a third, and, and it was all really driven by the use, and it was all driven because we realized, okay, well, we, we, there's a big need for music and art and a dance program and a film program. And so the project kept getting bigger because we realized there was so much of a need. And so that's why we're, we're very confident that before long, <laughs> we'll be saying, oh, what a small space we have. But we're, we're, we're thrilled with the result and we're glad we went through that process because if we hadn't gone through that process of saying, okay, what do we really need? Um, I don't think we've had the, the stunning building that we have today. This is clearly a very unique kind of building, especially for a community of this size. Um, I'm just wondering, as you look into the future and see what types of events are gonna be um, held here, what really excites you? Oh, that's a really good question. I, I think, honestly, the, the fact that there's so much diversity. What excites me is that on a Thursday night you may come here for a dance performance and a Friday night it may be a concert. Uh, Saturday night it could be a wedding and then Sunday it, it could be uh, a poetry reading or a jazz jam or uh, you know something completely different and that's really what excites me is the fact that the facility was designed to be a multi-purpose use facility and so at any given day there could be something dramatically different and even on the same day there could be dramatically different parts of the arts that are being celebrated on that one day. All right and lastly what's your favorite part or favorite location in the facility? Oh my gosh, I have to say, and I know this is going to sound silly, but um, uh, Brian Gassett has made uh, a lot of uh, suggestions for things, and one of, the, one of my favorites was on the second floor of the barn, um, rather than just having just a little stairs <laughs> come out, um, he made sure that it was a beautiful uh, little porch there that you can actually sit 
And what I'm so looking forward to is we're going to be having a healing garden planted in the spring. And so on that tiny little porch in the morning, um, we, we as the staff will be able to sit there and overlook this beautiful space. And so I, it's such a small, um, a small little thing, but um, it, it's really one of the things that I'm looking forward to is being here every day, working here every day, having those little nooks and crannies, those special places in this beautiful building. Well, I just wanted to congratulate you because it's an, it's an amazing space and it's an amazing job that you do for our community. Thank so you thank so you. Much. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Originally, when we moved to town, I was approached by Kelly to come bring my jewelry to do a, a holiday boutique. And I've been involved ever since. I teach classes at the HCA, and um, we've been part of the arts community in town, and we support all the artists. And our children are involved in the, the plays, all the productions. My daughter is singing. She's actually performing tonight, so we'll be able to see her in the choir number. The, chorus and we just love that we love this town and we are here to support the arts I'm here because I'm glad that Hobbington has a place for younger kids my kids are older right and that there's a place for them to come and, and take music and art when my kids are little there was no place in town so just to support it so Scott you've been involved with this literally from day one yes can you speak to where it started and how the plans changed and how you're feeling about how it ended up. Sure, sure. Well, actually, our firm has been involved in this project for well over 15 years, from when it started just with a concept, an idea, to the several phases of construction on the barn renovation, the addition, and then obviously now the final phase of completion for the performance center. And, uh, you know, it's gone through some iterations and uh, a lot of different uh, input, but certainly the in, the focus has always been to, pro to provide the best space possible for performance, for music, for theater, for dance, and I think we've accomplished that. Now, I've been hearing from everywhere that a building like this in a community of this size is simply amazing. So I know that you do a lot of stuff and you're involved with a lot of different communities. How, how is this for a community of this size? Well. Uh, it, it finally feels like Hopkinton has a, an identity, if you will, and that people, instead of going into Boston or going to other towns for uh, music, for performances, you know, we can come right here to the Center for the Arts. So it, the time is now, and it, I couldn't be uh, more excited for this phase of our growth and for providing something like this for the whole community. I'm looking forward to asking this next question. I've been asking everybody this and getting yeah. some really good answers. But as the architect, what's your favorite part of this facility? Uh, that's a trick question. Because <laughs> <laughs> certainly we like, you know, we, we conceive of the project as a whole. And so all of the parts contribute to the whole concept. But certainly the performance space is, you know, our favorite space. Certainly, and once we start to see some performances in there, I think that'll be reinforced. So, so we've, we've been hearing about a wide range of things that will be going on here, from lectures to music to plays to weddings to everything. Yeah. What's going to bring you back here? Uh, music. So any musical performance, hopefully we'll be able to be right there. During um, the process of building the building, could you tell me something that was like, uh, an oh wow moment or an unexpected challenge that you had to overcome or something that really comes to mind? Um, so, you know, again, as we design things, we're kind of visualizing what they're going to look like and we're pretty clear on what that is. The only thing that was frustrating is, hey, we wanted to get this whole thing done a couple of years ago, right? Yeah. So, to have it done in phases, we understand that. There's the financial constraints and the reality of that situation. But, you know, that's the only thing I can think of that, hey, it took a while to get here, but now that we're here, this is really, really exciting. So I know that as an architect also, you, you built a lot of buildings and you've had grand openings, things like that. But I'm just wondering, you know, in your town, right, at, you've gone through it all, it's open, this place is full of people. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? That feels pretty darn good. 
actually performing tonight with a group, um, and I've performed in different uh, musicals before with, with this theater, um, and I've met a lot of great friends here, great people, everyone's super supportive, and it's a great community, and I'm hoping that we raise a lot of money tonight. <laughs> Why are you here tonight? I'm here to commemorate the uh, alteration of this barn to a beautiful cultural facility for the future of Hopkinton. So there have been many hands involved in bringing this building to fruition from planning to construction to um, planning the activities that are going to be going on here. Could you tell me a couple of things that your involvement has been here? Uh, my involvement basically uh, Chuck Joseph came to me uh, uh, many months ago and brought the idea to me about constructing and taking over this project and the start was to rebuild the barn itself, the old barn and that's what we did. We came in here and for the first phase was to redo the old barn from the inside out and make that a you know multi-function use that it came to be you know uh, it offers a lot, ballet, art, music, and uh, we finished that in, sometime in July, and we were able to get the kids in and get them going, and we got a temporary occupancy for that part of the building. Uh, after that, it was a full push to do the rest of the building, and, uh, and that's taken several months because of all the infrastructure that had to go in, not only in the parking lot, but, you know, what you don't see under the floors, over the ceilings, you know, there's a lot to it. And it finally, we made it, you yeah. know. Now I'm sure that working in that old barn presented some surprises and some challenges. Uh, absolutely, but I have a background in remodeling, so uh, I was comfortable with dealing with that. It just is a matter of uh, uh, getting it done. It was, there was definitely challenges because of uh, the size of the barn and you know keeping the structure you know together uh, in order to put the new floors in and rip the old ones out I mean and again uh, it was a lot of cleaning just to get to that point before we could even think of construction of it but yeah it's uh, uh, we've been hearing a lot tonight about how unique this facility is, especially for a community of this size. And I was just wondering how it feels tonight, having been here through everything that you did, actually seeing it being used and ready to go for all the other activities that are going to be happening in this place that you put together. Uh, it's exciting, it really is, to see uh, the turnout that's here. and. Uh, this will it let you know how many great people are in this town that you know sacrifice not only time but you know their their money to to make this happen. It's incredible. Uh, I'm glad I was part of it, and uh, it's nice to see uh, the beginning, hopefully, of many many years of great you know, functions in this building. What's your favorite place in this building? Uh, I believe I'm going to say the second floor of the old barn. I think because it shows the character of the old barn, something we were able to keep and uh, reuse. And, you know, I think that's what really Hopkinton's all about, you know, trying to keep as much of the old as we could, you know. And I think it stands out when you go up there, you know. Okay. Now, um the things that are, go, are going to go on here are very varied, from jazz to plays to weddings to lectures. What's going to bring you back? Uh, I love the plays myself because uh, when my daughter was in fourth grade, because I'm a contractor, it was funny how my wife, uh, you know, she pretty much said, you know, I'll let... Uh, if anybody needs any help, my husband's a contractor and he can help with the plays and the set designs. And it started in fourth grade and I was, uh, year after year, I did it until they reached high school. And then by high school, the, you know, the kids take over for themselves. 
So, but it was many years of fun. So I really enjoy the place. So, because I know what's involved to do the sets and you know, create everything. It's a lot of work, and it, you know I enjoy that part of it. Well, thank you for all the work you've done for our community, and congratulations on a job well done. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure. So you've been involved in this process, helping out, donating materials here and there. Um, what's your impressions of how it turned out? It turned out really nice. It is much better than I ever would have imagined. You know, and. It's also, you know, a space that many different things are going to be happening in here, yep. whether they be, um, you know, um, events where maybe they're hosting something or they're doing a play or many different types of things. What types of things do you think that you'll be excited about happening here in our community? Oh, I think it'll be good that a place that people can go and it'll be, I would hope there'd be weddings here and different things. I think there'll be it's a it's a good spot for a lot of things you know I think besides cultural arts and all that there's a lot of things and you got the outside it's beautiful so. and um, so through having watched it go up and having like been involved with HCA before this building even was constructed um, what's your favorite part of the building well I like the old barn you know <laughs> I used to work with the Terry's so I remember putting a lot of hay up in that barn in the when it was the uh, Terry's Farm. So. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. So you go way back in, in this yeah, barn. Yeah. <laughs> I look like I'm in third grade, but I'm not. So. Uh, hi, Mom. I, um, I actually perform with this group of people a lot. These are all my friends and my, um, my neighbors, and I'm so excited to see this whole dream of very close friends of mine coming to fruition, and it's very exciting for all of us, so it's been nice. Thank you. Well, I'm here to support my wife, who's a wonderful glass artist, a member of the Hopkinton HCA committee, and we're supporters of the HCA. Um, I'm here because I've been part of Enter Stage Left since 2006, and things are finally being built, and actually we are part of the show coming up later tonight. All right, so first off, I'd like to thank you very much for coming out here. It's thrilled to be and, here. And I'm wondering what your impressions are of this facility. The facility's fantastic, so I just took a quick tour. Uh, to see the renovations here in this room that are uh, the progress that's been made and, and I think a little bit ways to go to see the function room upstairs this uh, the studios and the, uh, the the classrooms and the common space that can be used upstairs in the loft really is spectacular and it's an incredible community asset that I think really will bring arts and culture to the suburbs in a, in a really unique way so kudos to the community for for being able to pull this together and the vision behind it so I know you travel far and wide, you see many different things, and I was wondering for a community of this size, um, what your impression is of like what this space would mean for our community. It's an extraordinary asset for a community. Look, I think any community that has uh, a space like this that can bring the community together, that is the culmination of a years and years worth of effort, public-private partnership, uh, that really has the community buy-in, but then to put on an event like this and a celebration to see the outpouring from the community here tonight in just a packed crowd, I think the excitement literally is, is, is palpable about what this can mean for Hopkinton and the surrounding community about bringing speaker series and music and culture and arts and, and celebrate that as, a, as another treasure for the, uh, for the community here. So I'm thrilled to be here and, and really congratulations. All right. So, if you lived in Hopkinton, if you were a member <laughs> of our community, what uh, you just you just went through a pretty exhaustive list yeah. of the type of things that'll happen here. Yeah. What type of thing would really interest you and, and excite you? Look, I think more than any one thing, whether that's speakers or forums or gallery showings or anything else, it's the buy-in from the community and the fact that a community comes together to make an investment in its own community like this through a public-private partnership. It's the type of activity you hope to see in so many other communities that I represent and really across the country. So it's more than anything, and I think what's so special about this is that it can take the shape that the community wants, right? You, you've got a space and it's a wonderful space, but it can be used for, as somebody was saying to me earlier, everything from yoga lessons to ballet, to music, to culture, to demonstrations, to speakers. Uh, it's a pretty extraordinary thing. Uh, I am here for the uh, gala for the opening. Uh, my wife works on the committee and I think it's a great opportunity that the town you know stepped up to the plate and was able to 
put this all together for all of the kids that are very interested in theater arts. Um, when you think about it, all the towns around us, it was all about sports, all about football. And this is a great opportunity for kids that have a different outlook, that want to get into the theater arts program. And I think it's fantastic. It's great that the town and the community stepped up to it and supported it. Why are you here tonight? To support the cultural arts and everything we're doing here in Hopkinton. This is an incredible venue. Thrilled they built the building and what great support. Lou, you are on the HCE committee. That's correct. Okay. How did they become involved with supporting the HCA in this manner? Well, we were looking for a project in town that we thought would be, you know, really, could really use our help. And Chuck Joseph came up with an idea that, you know, what better idea to help the whole town is to put together a, a performing arts center. And it just started to snowball and snowball, and the next thing we knew, this was going to be our focus for the endowment committee, which I think is a great idea. How long have you guys been working towards this? Boy, it, it, it feels like a really long time since we started to uh, talk about the, uh, the, the center, but uh, I think it's been about, about three to four years, at least. We're trying to think of how long it's been. I'm gonna say it's even longer than that. So it's been a while, I'd say been more like five years. Now, I know this is a very versatile space and many different things can go on here. So as you think about the future and what's going to be happening here, what really excites you? What really excites me is to try to bring whatever it might be here that's going to, it's going to make the older people actually want to come, whether it's, it's a, uh, some sort of band or whether it's some sort of uh, person who's doing some sort of speeches here or whatever it might be. I want to see the people want to stay in town. It isn't even so much, you know, we want to help all the young people and all that they're doing. But I also, I thought it was very important that all of us that we're getting to that little older stage are going to find this to more or less be a place, instead of going into Boston, they can come and see something here. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I'm, I'm hoping, you know, will keep people in town. So the Community Endowment and the Center for the Arts are both very community-oriented um, entities. So I'd like to ask you, what first attracted you to become part of the HCE at the very beginning? It was more that, you know, I just, like we all do, we felt this is a special community in Hopkinton. And I've been so busy in, in what I've done, and I, I almost felt like I haven't done much and when Chuck asked me if he wanted, or wanted to be part of that board, I was really excited to be a part of it. You know, I just wanted to be a part of a project here in town. And I was so happy that they found something that the endowment really was going to focus on, and that's here. I mean, if you look around, it looks great. So going through this whole process, what was the most fun or the most enjoyable or the most rewarding aspect for you? The most rewarding is how the town actually really all, you know, uh, I don't know how to describe it. They came and they really were behind us. We made phone calls and people were really willing to donate. And when you see how much of the donations we had, it's just incredible. I just could not believe. So to me, the rewarding part is to see what the town actually did to want to be a part of this. I'm here to support the arts in Hopkinton. My youngest son is uh, very involved in the... Uh, theater program here and he's been involved for six, seven years so really uh, enjoy coming to watch him and all the shows and stuff and it's great, 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 uh, a great event tonight. Get some hors d'oeuvres and beer. I'm here for the town of Hopkinton. I said this is a great, great place to be opened up for the arts. Uh, I think it's a great statement for the town of Hopkinton. I think it's a great contribution for a ton of people and Glad to help out. Well, I'm proud to say that I um, am an uh, HCA employee for the past, um, well, before it was even HCA, actually, with Interstage Left Theater. So I, I'm here to perform and um, enjoy the uh, evening of you know, finally being here in this space. So could you tell me how long you have been involved with the HCA and what you do here? Um, I've been involved for about a year and a half. Um, 
I saw that this beautiful building being built and I knocked on their door and I said, do you have a dance program? And they said no and I said, well, I would really like to work with you and develop a really nice dance program here. Um, and so the everything just kind of came very, very smoothly. Wonderful person, um, Kelly Grell and Chris Waldron were amazing people to work for and accepted this amazing program to be built. So we started once a week down in the Masonic Hall downtown uh, because this building was not finished. And so we um, started one class and then and now it's building with four or five days a week of classes. This is our beautiful space and um, it is really amazing to work here. Uh, um, dance do you teach and what age groups do you teach to? We teach uh, mainly classical ballet is our main focus here, although um, starting with three, four and five year olds, creative movement, we continue with five, six, seven year olds with pre-ballet, um, then we continue with ballet one, two and three, uh, coming once a week, twice a week and we're hoping for having more of a, an opportunity for growing and training more dancers three to four times a week. Um, and uh, we also uh, continue with tap classes uh, for uh, teenagers and modern and jazz classes for teenagers as well and our wonderful adult program uh, with classical ballet, modern jazz, and tap. We also have a floor bar, which is a new program here. Uh, it's basically taking the classical ballet exercises and putting them on the floor and almost like Pilates and uh, so core work. So it's really wonderful for adults. Uh, so that's actually amazing. It's really impressive. What is your background? How did you get all of this? Uh, well, I've, uh, I'm a Canadian, so I'm Montreal born. And I'm trained at the National Ballet School of Canada and the teacher's program. I've been teaching for over 30 years, <laughs> try to count. Um, and I'm just uh, loving teaching. I've uh, been teaching all these years, um, own two schools of my own in Canada. And we moved down to the United States in 2004 and uh, started actually on Hayden Row with uh, the Ballet Workshop of New England and um, with Mrs. Kronzberg, lovely woman, who um, gave me good opportunity to know what's going on in the United States mm. in dance. How, and after that, we moved. I moved to teach with Walnut Hill School for the Arts. And now I'm here. So I'm teaching here and loving it. Well, thank you for the work that you do for our community. Thank you so much. Why are you here tonight? Oh, to support the Center for the Arts. They've done a tr tremendous job. It's beautiful. Thank you very much. Because it's the most exciting thing that's happened in hockey in, in years. And we were invited. All right. So why are you here today? The same reason. I just think it's phenomenal what's going on in Hopkinton with this. And we are now a, a, uh, a town that everybody wants to belong to. Now that we're standing in the completed building and it's actually being used and all the excitement is going on, can you give me a brief overview of the involvement that you have had um, as, a, as a member of the Board of Selectmen and now the Chairman? Yeah, well, uh, this has been a spectacular project, obviously, and all credit goes to Chuck Joseph and all the, all the folks who, who did it for all this many years. The, the level of their dedication is amazing. I was just saying, I can actually remember, whatever, just a year or two ago, Chuck taking me for a tour here and we had to climb through a, a hole that had been cut in the floor with a ladder to get up to the second floor. And, you know, and then he stands here and says, think about the vision of, of what we're going to have here. And, and to stand here now and say he actually pulled it off, it's all done, is just, just a tremendous event. I mean, this is such a nice building for the town. Great asset. Great, great new addition to all the great things we have going on here in town. So I couldn't be more excited. So I've been hearing a lot tonight how, how unique this this building is, especially for a community of this size. I was wondering, like, in your experience and in, you know, interacting with other communities and things, what do you think of this? I think it's exactly true. I mean, 
what we're seeing here is the town maturing into a, an entity that goes just beyond having great schools, right? So we started off 15 years ago with the high school, building a reputation for schools. You brought a lot of young families to town. Now they're all maturing and their kids are maturing and the town's maturing with them. So uh, it, it's just, just one of many events we have going on in town that are so nice and, and really reflect the growth of the community, right? So now we have a bunch of new restaurants coming to town. We're going to have a brand new library that's going to be downtown and hopefully bring people to some of those restaurants and around. And then as I said a while ago at a, a chamber event, they'll go have dinner, they'll go check out the library, then they can come up here and go see a play or some other musical event or any of the wonderful art shows they're going to have here. So. This is truly unique. It's, it's one of the many things that makes Hopkinton a wonderful community, and it's definitely unusual in the fact that you don't, you're right, you don't usually find things in, in communities of this size. So Now, that's very interesting, because no one spoke about how this fits in with other aspects of the downtown community and stuff. So when you look at this facility and at the events that you see going on, that are going to be going on here, from plays to jazz to weddings to lecture series, what most excites you? I think all of it. I think just the fact that honestly it's a center for the arts, right, that it's going to have all those different things. I think the variety is part of the excitement about this. You'll, again, you'll be able to go to a, one of the many restaurants in town, go to, the, to go walk around downtown, and then come up here and catch anything. I mean, we, we, there's great artwork on the walls. There is, as you said, there's going to be music. There's music playing right now in the background. There's a whole host of, of play series they put on. Um, the variety is part of what makes it exciting. It's really, it's really, um, and probably I, I would say more than anything, that's the, that's that's the thing I, I'm excited most about, is, is being able to come here constantly and having it be new every time. Now you've seen it as the plans changed, as they dealt with issues, as they made everything work. What's your favorite part of this, of this facility? You mean in terms of the building or you mean in terms of just the setup? My favorite part of this facility, well, it's clearly this barn, right? Because you think about what this looked like two years ago. I mean, we had a a ramshackle, borderline dangerous facility that didn't even have a floor in it. And now we're standing on this beautifully reclaimed wood with these great beams and staircases and all. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just a remarkable building. And it's got so many different purposes. I mean, they were really thoughtful when they constructed this about making sure it can be usable for a number of different events. And so it's, it's acoustically well arranged. It's visually well arranged. Um, it just, it just, it's appealing. The entryway is remarkably attractive to walk through. So just uh, the transformation is so incredible and so extreme um, that how could you not be excited when you walk into here? And how was your experience in working with the HCE and the board of the HCA and the code executive directors and bringing it all together and making it something that the town can support and work with? Well, again, they fulfilled our highest possible expectations, right? All credit goes to them. We, the town, as you know, in 1997, I think it was, we did the lease, right, with this building that wasn't even habitable, basically. I mean, they have gone off, they have dealt with us on occasion when they needed to, right? We've worked with them on permitting, we've worked with them on some, some of the structural issues they had to deal with. Obviously, the town supported them with CPA funding along the way, but I mean, that doesn't take away anything from the fact that this group went off and privately raised a remarkable amount of money and got this whole building done uh, as a private an entity. And so this is just such an incredible example of a public-private partnership where the private side absolutely pulled their weight. And I would and I would say any of us on the board of selectmen, anyone in town who saw this would say they did they far exceeded what we could have ever hoped for. I, if this had been half as nice as it is, we'd have been thrilled. Um, I, I can't say enough good things about all of them and all the work they've done and what they've given the community as an asset. It's, it's going to be great for the next hundred years. Um, I actually work here, um, but so I helped plan the event, but I'm also going to be singing later and I'm really, really excited about this space and opening it up to the public. Well, I will tell you, um, I was here a week ago and it was all a bunch of, it was a very dusty and out of control and it's amazing to see within a, like the last three or four days to see the transformation. I know it's been about more like 20 years of transformation, but I'm here tonight because I'm here to celebrate what, what's, what's been accomplished. And I'm also with my bandmates, uh, Hot Acoustic Bandmates, we're going to be playing some tunes tonight, which I'm honored to do. And uh, I'm looking forward to that really soon. Yeah, hey, I was wondering if you could tell me some of your impressions so far of this, uh, this event and this facility. First rate, first class. I think the most exciting part for me is that the facility that we're standing in was done uh, without tax dollars. The, the group that's done this work is phenomenal, but the fact that they've uh, done it privately is spectacular. 
And when you think about some of the events, some of the activities that are going to happen here in the future, what kind of things do you find exciting? Well, I can, I can see us uh, doing uh, exhibits around the marathon, for example, uh, an art contest. I, can, I can't wait to talk to the director next week about, about getting started on, a, on an art contest for young people. This is, this is the ideal place to, to uh, display those, uh, uh, those art pieces of art. That's one. All right. Now, I know you're very connected in the community. So as this has been going through the process of being uh, fundraised and being built and working up to this gala event, what type of things have you been hearing from, from different aspects of the community? You know, I haven't heard one negative comment. Uh, there was, there's a great deal of expectation uh, around what's, go what's it going to look like and when are they going to get finished. A lot of excitement. Uh, all positive across the board. So people are are interested to get in, to get in here to to see the facility and then to think about how to utilize it. And um, I'm just curious because you travel far and wide and you see a, a great many places. I'm just wondering like how unique this collaboration was that brought this together and the type of facility this is for a town of this size. If you think about just Metro West, Metro West alone, I don't think there's a facility quite like this in Metro West. There may be uh, an art center in, in Framingham, a small one. There's a, there's a smaller one in, uh, in Natick, for example. Those are all bigger towns. Framingham's roughly 70,000 people, and we're 16. Speaks to the work and the effort that went into this, and also the vision. Uh, somebody had to put some serious thinking into this to create this facility, which, which will really be sort of a, a, a place to be featured in Metro West. Do you think there will be plans to utilize this facility during the marathon time, being so close to uh, the schools? I have, I have no doubt that there are people already lining up to utilize this facility. The marathon is just a start. Uh, you'll, you'll see, this will be a facility that gets booked and utilized.